Hey, what is up, guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here, back with another Market Watch episode. Today, we are going over a few more cards that are currently trending on the market, kind of like a continuation of the episode from a couple of days ago. There's a few odd cards that have popped up here and there with so many different things going on, and of course, I want to make sure that you guys are as aware of everything as possible. I don't have much else that I want to lead off with, so let's go ahead and get started. So first up, we're looking at Heritage of the Chalice. So one of the main archetypes that is getting a ton of support in Duelist Nexus is Infernoble Knights, which get a ton of really cool monsters and spells. The deck really hasn't been relevant for a while. Losing Smoke Grenade of the Thief and Aurorodon really made the deck just feel really average. But now, however, with all of the new cards that they're getting, they can do some pretty cool things. Heritage of the Chalice is a card that already exists for the archetype, a really versatile Rota that can search for either a Noble Knight monster or a Noble Arms card. Now, the Noble Knight deck has basically like 16 copies of Rota, but Heritage of the Chalice is especially useful because it can also add back a card from your graveyard to your hand instead of searching, making it very useful in the later game as well, when maybe you've already burned through a good chunk of your deck. However, this of course means that Heritage of the Chalice is now pretty expensive. The card was basically bulk when it got that Mega Tin reprint, but that was back in 2019 and it has been a few years since that printing came out. Because of that, the secret rares from the tins are up to $17 each, while the original print ultra rares are around $15. Personally, I like the way that the secrets look on their own, but a lot of the new Noble Knight cards are ultra rares, so maybe you want to grab ultras so that the whole deck will match rarities. I don't really see where this card could get a reprint outside of maybe like hopefully being included in the next OTS tournament pack or something like that, so if you do want to play Noble Knights this upcoming format, you probably just have to pay up for this card. The deck hasn't done too well over in the OCG, so maybe the deck will flop a bit here and all the prices will cool off, but of course with the TCG and OCG being so different, we can't say for sure until we have some concrete results here with the set being fully legal. Alright, so the next card here is a really random one, I honestly hadn't heard of this card before yesterday, it's called Soundproofed. It's a really simple Floodgate normal spell card. You have to activate this card at the start of your main phase 1, but when you do it prevents either player from synchro summoning until the end of your opponent's next turn. So this is an old card from back in Extreme Victory, which I think was technically back in the synchro era where synchros were the main mechanic in the game, and if you played this there was a very good chance that it was also restricting what you could do as well. But for now, in today's format, right, we have very fusion heavy decks, and then we also have Ixiz, Pendulum, and Link monsters, so this card can be used by those decks as a side deck option against strategies that are extremely synchro heavy. Here I'm specifically thinking of Synchrons or Mana Diem. It's a pretty interesting option, obviously. Certain decks won't be able to use it, and it has very limited applications, but I could see a world where this card is just really good and going to blow out decks that you're supposed to side this against, right? On the flip side, though, I could definitely see this card being a horrible top deck or just a huge liability if you saw it in anything other than your opening hand against a very synchro heavy deck. I don't know, this card probably won't do anything too crazy, but I guess there's some players that are really hyped for it, so we're now looking at Soundproof to being a $1-$2 to $2 card. I'm pretty sure that this card used to just be bulk, so this is more of a note for you guys that might have some old bulk lying around that you can dig this card up out of and see if it's possible to get any value out of it. On to the next one, I want to talk a little bit about Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon. So I think a lot of you guys will already know about this card, it's a pretty scary card to have to play against. This card flips all monsters on the field to face down defense position, and then if either player controls a face up monster, they have to send all of those face up monsters to the graveyard. So originally I think a lot of us saw this as a free way to clear link monsters and monsters that are unaffected by card effects since this card also forces the player to send their own monsters to the graveyard, sort of like how evenly matched resolves. However, as we've transitioned to a very synchro heavy and link heavy format, this card has proven to be even scarier recently. Against something like Dragon Link, if you can flip your opponent's monsters face down at the right time, they can't make any additional plays without having just the right extender, and against Mana Diem, you can't synchro with face down monsters and you also can't use the effect of Visa Starfrost to pop something that's face down either. It's also really strong against Kash Tira, which of course has come up again as being one of the best decks of the format, despite hits to Unicorn and number 89. Now that being said, Karma Cannon is particularly potent in Labyrinth, which is able to search this card out with Lady, and the deck also just got a big boost revealed to becoming an Age of Overlord with Arias the Labyrinth Butler. 
But even with that, I think that Dinkabui and Ryan Yu each played three copies of Karma Cannon in their Labyrinth main boards for their respective national events. Karma Cannon was a pretty cheap card, I think that for a while it was only around $3 to $4, however over the last few weeks this card has shot up and is now sitting at $9 per copy. This is a card that should be getting a reprint in the Megatons as Darkwing Blast falls within the reprint range for this year, but even then, expect this card to remain expensive for the next little while as a competitive staple that can really turn games around when it resolves. Next up, Synchro Overtake is I think one of the more underrated spells from the last couple of years. This card lets you reveal a Synchro monster from your extra deck and then either search for or special summon from your deck a monster whose name was on the revealed card. So basically this card can function as a emergency teleport for Jet Synchron who itself provides two bodies that you can make plays with. Now Synchro Overtake does lock you into Synchro Summoning for the turn, but if you're playing something like a Synchron deck, I don't think you really mind that all that much. So this card does have two different printings. The original Secret Rare is from Dawn of Majesty, and then we have the Megaton reprint Ultra Rare from that year as well. The Ultras are still dirt cheap, but the original Secret Rares are up to $7 to $8 per copy. This is a card that I think you would want to run three copies of in Synchrons, since it basically summons one of them out of the deck for you for free. Now if you insist on blinging out the deck, the secrets aren't that expensive yet, they still might be pretty affordable, you can probably grab them off someone for like maybe $5 per copy, but that's a little bit harder to justify when you can just grab the ultras, which are very accessible for less than a dollar each. Moving on, the next card here is TG Striker, so for those of you that have been playing the game for quite a while, this card shouldn't be a stranger. The TG engine has been good for a couple of different decks throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! history, most notably with TG Agents, but also being good in a couple of other Synchro era decks as well. TG Striker is a really simple card. If your opponent controls a monster but you don't, you can special summon this card from your hand. And then of course it has the standard TG effect, where during the end phase if this card is in the graveyard, because it was on the field and destroyed this turn, you get to search for a TG monster. So the new TG support that we are getting in Age of Overlord does look really good, and it has a lot of people really excited to see exactly what the deck can do. It's another synchro heavy strategy, but of course it's also very nostalgic for players that used to play with the TG cards many years ago. Now I'm not an expert on how TG works, I've read the new cards and they seem good, but I don't really know much about how the deck is going to fit together or be played. However, from the replays that I've seen, Striker doesn't seem like it's going to be used all that much. I think Lithium played one copy in his build, but it seems like something that you either play one of or none at all. And I guess that actually does make sense, right? Before, this card being a free special summon of a tuner was crazy, but in the context of today's game, if it doesn't summon other monsters or draw you cards or somehow allow you to go like plus five, the card is generally considered to be not that great. However, apparently players are super hyped for this card, so the card's one holo printing from Legendary Collection 5Ds is now a $20 card, which is kinda crazy, but we do have to keep in mind, that's a set that wasn't really opened all that much. Aside from that, the card does have a rare printing and then a relatively recent OTS common printing that are each around a dollar right now. I don't know, you'll have to take it with a grain of salt and remember that this card does have applications in a couple of different Time Wizard formats as well, even though those might not be necessarily the most popular at the moment. If you do have extra strikers lying around and you don't mind playing the budget versions of the card, go ahead and sell off your ultras and make a solid chunk of change for a card that is basically just completely outclassed in today's format. Okay, so this is one I just want to touch on briefly because it's actually kind of crazy. It's Elemental Hero Absolute Zero. It's honestly insane how expensive this card is, especially when you remember that this card isn't being used in today's format, but rather it's just seeing play in Edison format decks. This card is something that you summon by fusing a hero monster with any water monster, and there's actually a lot of different Edison decks that try and do this. Diva Heroes with Deep Sea Diva and Malicious and Stratos is a very popular deck in Edison format, and they run multiple copies of Absolute Zero since he's a free board wipe that has a 2500 attack point body that you can very easily access with Miracle Fusion. Well, I think that the crazy part is just how expensive this card is for all of its different printings. For the original Ultra Rare printing from the little manga, those are literally $100 right now on TCG Player, which is absurd. From there, you're looking at the Battles of Legend Heroes Revenge Ultra, or Special Edition Super Rare printing for Hollow versions. Either of those is still a really solid $18 to $20, 
And then the even more silly one is that if you want the common from the OTS tournament pack, those are $15 each as well. Really crazy, but I guess it does speak to the popularity of Edison format, which kind of tells us that maybe we should be looking at key cards for other old formats that might become popular out of nowhere. The one thing we have to hope for with this card is that we just got the Battles of Legends Season 1 box announced, and that's supposed to reprint a bunch of Battles of Legend cards, so hopefully we will see Absolute Zero reprinted in there as well, and that should theoretically really cool off the card's price. Keep an eye on this card and see if you can sell it for maximum value before the card does get reprinted. And finally, there's one last card for us to take a look at here, and it is F.A. Don Dragster. So I'm dropping this card here at the end as sort of a recommendation, so hopefully you guys are able to look into this card. Don Dragster is a generic level 7 synchro monster, and what we're looking at this card for is the fact that you can lower its level by 2 to negate any spell or trap card. This card is a level 7, so it's a once per turn negate, but you could use it a total of 3 times. Now given the synchro heavy format that we are heading into, I think that this might be a card that's worth picking up now while it's so extremely cheap. As a generic level 7 synchro, it's fairly easy to make. We do need to remember that we can't make this card with Revolution Synchron since you can only make dragons with that one I believe, however the card should be pretty easy for synchro decks to put out. Maybe if you're running like a punk engine for level 3 access, and with decks in the format like Labyrinth and Trap Tricks that are more reliant on back row, this is going to be a decent option that a lot of these synchro decks will probably want to have access to. So this card only has a couple of printings, the original one was a rare and then it got a super rare upgrade in the 2019 Megatins. Now given that this is the card's only holo printing, the fact that the card is still sitting at only a dollar right now is kind of crazy to me. I feel like as synchros get more and more powerful over the next little while, this is a card that a lot of players will want to pick up, especially because it's so useful against other strategies running around in the format. Now obviously guys, don't take what I'm saying here blindly, and do a little bit of looking into the card and the format for yourselves, but if you guys are looking for a cheap card that feels undervalued and has a pretty decent chance to go up in price over the next little bit, that's also going to require minimal investment on your side, Don Dragster is a card that I would definitely be considering. Alright guys, that is all I have for today's episode. We'll keep an eye on things over the next few weeks. Of course we have Duelist Nexus sneak peeks this weekend to look forward to, and then before you know it, the Megatons will be here to reprint everything anyways. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch, please make sure that you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Also make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And until next time guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.